In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a glowing Fresnel effect for any object in Blender. We'll be using the Cycles Render Engine Node Editor to create a simple setup that'll help us achieve this emitting glowy Fresnel. In this tutorial, I'll be using an imperfect sphere with the fiery texture on it. Here I have the material I'll be using for the object, and now I want to add a Fresnel around the orb that glows and emits light. Click on the Add button down here in the Node Editor or press Shift A on your keyboard and search for the Layer Weight node. The Layer Weight node allows the use of Fresnel and Facing when blending two shaders. If we play around with the blend value, you can see how much reflectivity is added to the sphere. The white parts are completely reflective while the darker parts have little to no reflection. I'm going to set the blend value around 0.6 so that it has a nice smooth Fresnel with high reflectivity around and very little towards the center of the sphere. Next, we'll add in a color ramp node that we'll be using as our control. Change its interpolation from linear to ease. As you can see, not only does our color ramp's color panel gradient change slightly, but so did our sphere. The ease interpolation is essentially giving an eased transition from one color value to the other, making it less solid. If you know what a linear and an ease interpolation curve is in math, then you'll feel pretty at home as to understanding how these would work in Blender. If we try dragging the black and white sliders on the panel, you can see how this affects the range of the Fresnel, and we'll be using this as our control for the overall Fresnel effect. What we're essentially doing is creating our colored glowing Fresnel effect and overlaying it on top of the current material without harming or changing the material's look. But we'll come back to the sliders later. The left black slider will be used as the inside part of our Fresnel mask, so we can use the right slider as the color of our glowing Fresnel, and we're going to base my color off the overall color of my material. However, let's come back to this part later and focus on applying this to our material. Next, let's add in our emission shader. We're going to make our Fresnel react as if it were emitting light rather than reflecting light, and we can do just that by plugging in the color ramp's color output into the emission shader's input. As you can see, we now get a Fresnel that glows and emits light. You can also crank up the emission strength since it's currently reflecting very little light. And now we want to add the glowing Fresnel on top of our current material, so let's add in a Mix Shader node. Once added, plug in the object's original material into the top shader input, and plug in the emission shader's output into the bottom Mix Shader's input. As you can see, we get a smooth blend between both materials. You can see the different materials by dragging the Mix Shader's factor value from 0 to 1, and vice versa. However, rather than blending the two shaders together, we want to add the glowing Fresnel on top of the original material without interfering with it, and we can simply do just that with the object's layer weight data. If you don't understand, think of it like this. The mask that we created with the layer weight and color ramp will determine where the bottom shader is being casted on the top shader, since the layer weight and the color ramp will control the factor of the mix shader and how the two shaders are mixed together. So by plugging in the color ramp's color output into the mix shader's factor input, we can use that mask to control the mix shader's factor. Currently, our bottom shader, the Fresnel, is being blended correctly on the original material without interfering with it. And now, we can do all the necessary changes to our glowing Fresnel by tweaking and adjusting the Fresnel blending and the color ramp panel. I made a few changes, such as changing the color of the glowing Fresnel and decreasing its Fresnel radius. Alright, we're just about done, now I want to improve our object's emission, because if we take a look at the plane next to it, we can see that our object has a weak light path, and I also want to change the color of our emission's light being casted on the plane. Click on our current emission shader and press Shift D on your keyboard to duplicate it. Then we'll add in a light path node. Plug in the Fresnel emission shader into the mix shader's middle input and the new emission shader into the bottom input. Then plug in the ray depth output from the light path node and drag it into the mix shader's factor input. This setup allows us to use the bottom shader as our object's emission instead. And basically, ray depth increases your light bounces by trying to pass through as much objects as it can reach. Which is why when using ray depth, the scene is much brighter, and in many ways, they can actually help increase realism to your scene. Here, I removed all the light sources in my scene, so it's easier to see the light being casted on the plane. The bottom emission shader will be the light being casted from your object, so you can change its color or whatever you want, or you can even plug in a texture to create a nice textured lighting. And now to finally combine everything together, let's repeat what we've done previously. We'll add in another mix shader, plug in the original material shader into the middle input of the mix shader, and the Fresnel emission setup into the bottom input. And finally, plug in our control, aka the color ramp, into the factor input. 
We now have our object with a glowing Fresnel around it. And to prove that it's working, let's rotate around the orb. As you can see, we've created a successful glowing Fresnel. And here's the finished render. It's based off of a fantasy style weapon from a parallel world. Tell me if you guys can figure out where this is from. And that's how to create a glowing Fresnel effect for any type of object in Blender. Thanks so much for watching, if you found this tutorial helpful in any way, or learned something new, leave a like on this video to show your support, and consider subscribing to 2 Easy CG for more Blender procedural tutorials like this one. My name is Joshua Autumn via 2 Easy CG. thanks for watching.